Hello, this is Kit Cabello with Hardlands Media. We are conducting a very special interview with a representative for Illinois Women in Cannabis. And this is a very important group because it's talking about the legalization of cannabis, empowering women in cannabis, and also getting pro-cannabis business uh, organizations here in our state of Illinois. So for our viewers and subscribers, can you please introduce yourself and the position that you have in Illinois Women in Cannabis? My name is Erin Alexander, and I am a vice president and board member for Illinois Women in Cannabis. I've been involved with them since 2015, uh, roughly a year after they were founded. Now, it's quite clear that you know, the population here in the United States is viewing cannabis a lot different. Uh, early on, it was viewed with suspicion, of course, it's the war on drugs, but now people are opening, uh, or, or at least being more open to the idea of having cannabis legalized, both for medicinal use and recreational use. Uh, what do you think has really led to this reversal in policy and how people view this, I guess, this medicinal product? Well, I mean, I think it's a couple things. I think first and foremost, the states that have been legalizing or adopting medical-only programs have, you know, have sort of started the trend of showing that cannabis can is is not as harmful as people might once have thought that it was, um, and that it can be used responsibly. I think also what's contributed to it is the fact that, you know, the the notion of sort of the stoner or pothead image that's been associated with cannabis sort of in years past has changed and shifted, and you have people now that are in the industry that are professionals, whether they're lawyers or accountants or just entrepreneurs, um, you know, these are professional, serious people that understand that it, that it helps people, but they also understand that, you know, it's a business, and um, they, you know, conduct themselves in a way, perhaps, that it may have been unexpected for the industry at one time. Now, let's talk about your group, Illinois Women in Cannabis. What have you guys done specifically here in this state to really help empower women and also really change the public opinion of cannabis in our state? Because as we all know, Illinois is dealing with a budgetary crisis, and we could definitely use a boost like how Colorado has, which is a budgetary surplus for the past yes. X amount of years since they legalized cannabis. So what do you guys do here specifically in our state? So Illinois Women in Cannabis was founded with the notion of create a, that cannabis is an industry that's too new to have a glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. So you know we seek to sort of educate, mentor, empower, connect uh, not just women but men as well mm -hmm. to whether it's operators, law firms, financial firms within the states. Uh, you know to find opportunities whether it's starting your own business or finding a particular. Um, role within an existing, whether it's cultivator, dispensary, what have you. Um, and so what we've done, and, and this organization has sort of grown with the Illinois cannabis industry as well. So, you know, at the beginning, the Illinois Medical Cannabis Pilot Program was struggling. There, was, there weren't that many patients. It was hard to sign up. Um, and so, you know, as we were initially founded, one of the things that we first started doing was just trying to be a way to get people, like-minded people in the same room. Um, to network, to meet each other, to help create opportunities. Um, and as the industry in the state has grown, we've grown with it. Um, so we do a couple of networking events a year where we will bring, over the summer event had over 400 people. We actually just had an event this week where we had over 300 people. And those are sort of your, you know, your networking events where we'll have representatives from all of the, almost all of the cultivators or dispensaries in the state. And you can find ways to meet people. Um, we've also done sort of a, um, an educational series that we typically do in the springtime. Um, and the, the purpose of that really is to sort of get the word out in the state about medical cannabis, the fact that it's legal in Illinois, you know, how you get a card, what the approved conditions are, things like that. So people start to realize that this is an available therapy for certain, you know, certain types of people with certain types of conditions in the state. Um, you know, you'd be surprised how many people don't realize that cannabis is legal medically here in Illinois. Um, and then the third thing that we've just started doing really is statewide outreach. Um, you know, we, uh, all of our board members are sort of in the Chicagoland, the greater Chicagoland area, but cultivators and dispensaries and entrepreneurs and patients are located throughout the state. And so trying to sort of Host events. We hosted one event um, outside of Springfield. We're hosting another, um, I believe, out near Rockford very soon. Um, and so it's really sort of getting the word out um, and you know bringing people together. We've been very fortunate to have um, 
again, not just women, but men also who've been able to develop opportunities for themselves, mm -hmm. um, whether they're entrepreneurial and sort of getting support for their business, either you know finding financing or finding an attorney that can help them. Um, but we've also had people actually uh, find jobs at some of these cultivators and dispensaries. Um, and so it's really exciting. It's a really exciting time to be involved in the industry. Even in the last year, it's changed tremendously, and it just feels like it has a lot of momentum. Now, we have to bring Springfield into this, and of course, politics, because we're always a news show, and we do talk a lot about politics on our show a lot. Um, let's deal with the fact that, uh, what, where does this future of medical cannabis stand here in our state? Because currently, Governor Bruce Runner did sign a bill on it, but what is its potential future down the road? And of course, there's a, a, another potential of us having a new governor. So what is the future of medical cannabis legalization here in our state, and what will be the, I guess, outcome for any potential programs that are helping people battle issues such as opioid addiction mm -hmm. or uh, mental mental issues, mental stress, men, you know, PTSD. Right, mental health issues. Yeah. Um, sure, yeah, it's, you know, again, it's been a slow, in Illinois it's a very limited program. It still is a very limited program. Um, you know, initially we were the only state in the country that required patients to get fingerprinted and background checked. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was obviously a deterrent to many people who might otherwise want that cannabis as a medicine or cannabis as a therapy. Um, but the change has slowly come. And again, I think there's some momentum here. The governor, uh, Governor Rauner signed uh, the Alternative to Opioids Act at the end of August. Um, and that has the, the number one sort of meaningful change for with that law is the fact that it gets rid of the fingerprinting requirement for patients. But the second thing that it does is it creates a, a program whereby patients that you know would be prescribed opioids can have access to cannabis as an alternative. Um, and obviously there are rules and limitations on it, um, and the agencies that are responsible for implementing the law have I think until December first mm -hmm. to get those rules in place. Um, but it's a you know it's a step in the right direction um, in terms of you know where does this industry go you know. To me, the genie is sort of out of the bottle. Um, it becomes harder and harder, you know, whether the particular governor is for or against cannabis, adult use cannabis or adult access, recreational, whatever you want to call it. Um, it becomes harder and harder, I think, to fight that as more states uh, go online and you see that, you know, sort of the boogeyman things that are associated with medical can with, with cannabis in general aren't really taking place. And there are things like tax revenue and good things that are being done for those states. Um, so I would say that, you know, there's a decent chance, I'm optimistic that, that we're going to see some type of adult use or adult access bill here in the next, you know, year or two in this state. Um, I think that there's, you know, there have been sort of studies on how quickly, when a state has a medical program, how quickly thereafter they'll adopt a recreational program, and that, I think the average is about 24 months. So we're a little bit behind that curve because Governor Quinn, I think, signed this law into effect in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, but I, again, I'm optimistic that, there, that there's going to be progress made. Now, you're uh, speaking about recreational cannabis, there's Senate Bill 316 and House Bill 2353. Currently, some of the Democrats and maybe a handful of Republicans are on board for calling for recreational use in our state, mm -hmm. similar to what Colorado has. Mm -hmm. Has your organization worked in, in conjunction with other groups that are trying to get recreational cannabis legal here in our state? And if so, what kind of pushback have you gotten from at least elected officials in Springfield? Right. I mean, we haven't really worked, I would say, directly. Some of our members or our supporters have certainly been to Springfield or been to the hearings, um, even the ones that have been in Chicago, you know, while the, the legislature sort of explores the possibilities. Um, and one of the things that I think, you know, the, the, the sponsors of that bill um, have been very thoughtful in terms of the way they're trying to roll it out. You know, they're trying to get input from various stakeholders and really build a consensus and a coalition of supporters. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure that the, that the negativity or the opposition here, um, you know, is, has really been as vocal or mobilized perhaps as they could be, um, or perhaps as they might be if they feel that there's some sort of real serious effort to, to, to roll it out. Um, but again, I think it's, I think there's a lot of optimism about where this is headed in the future.
Now let's look, actually look at our neighbors up north, Canada. They have legalized it uh, at the federal level for yeah. their country. And Sales just started this week, actually. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a huge benefit. <laughs> yes. But the thing is, now what, what, what it's probably, uh, I guess, cause of concern is, um, since they will be so far ahead, will they be in charge of the markets in regards to cannabis legalization and cannabis products? Because the United States is still far behind. Of course, we have a very hostile administration within the Trump right. administration towards cannabis, most notably with Jeff Sessions. Right. Um, what is the future of cannabis legalization here in the United States as a whole compared to Canada? Where will, will, where will be, I guess, our local businesses here in, right. in our country? How will they compare to those in Canada? Well, I mean, I'll sort of take the first part of your question first, um, which is, you know, sort of how far behind we will be. I actually don't think that we'll be very far behind. The United States is very fortunate to have a number of operators that have been in the space for a while, you know, for more than a couple of years, um, and now have multinational operations. In fact, in Illinois, you know, we're really fortunate to have several operators that have, you know, they have grow process locations or dispensaries in across the country. Um, and so I don't really think that we're going to be behind because they, you know, those companies are already spending a lot of money and a lot of investment on developing their products, developing their brands. Um, and so I don't think that, you know, that the Canadian businesses are going to be any further ahead than the businesses are here. Um, in terms of where federal le law or federal legislation and where does the federal government go from here, I have no idea. Um, you know, it's, it, <laughs> you guys talk about politics on this show, so, you know, you know it's been a wild ride mm -hmm. for the last two years. So, um, certainly Jeff Sessions is not somebody who's supportive of the industry. Um, but I think, you know, his voice, fortunately, has thus far not been able to carry the day. So there haven't been any, you know, there haven't been any major challenges thrown up at the federal level. Um, you know, obviously you've got issues federally that the federal, where the federal government could be of assistance, particularly a tax issue, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and access to banking where the federal government could be some help, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure where it goes in terms of full legalization here in the United States or how long that might take, but I do think we're going to get there eventually. And speaking of which, we should address Jeff Sessions as, of course, he has reignited his war on cannabis. He's been the leading figure, much to everyone's cringe, and, you know, no one's really taking that seriously, but he has indicated, and he has stated in the past, that, you know, that he wants to definitely lead the charge against making cannabis illegal yeah. in the country, and he's also stated that federal law will supersede state law, yeah. even in states which it's which cannabis is legal at yeah. the recreational level and medicinal level. Yeah. So with your group and other organizations like it, what are your plans to at least challenge um, his policies on, I guess, in the courts at the state and federal level? Well, I, with specifically to Illinois Women in Cannabis, I don't know that we necessarily have um, you know, any plans to do that. There are national cannabis you know, trade associations, lobbying groups, what have you, um, that I think are prepared to fight that fight if necessary. Fortunately, there haven't been any real, you know, enforcement activities that have gone on, you know, again, you got to knock on wood, mm -hmm. um, because it could change. It could change overnight, given, you know, who we have as, as our attorney general. Um, but, you know, this, this, it's interesting because Jeff Sessions is in a position where he obviously is not supportive of cannabis as a whole, but I think generally is also not... 100% ready to trample on the notion that, that states do have a say in it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. And uh, let's focus back on Illinois Women on Cannabis. When you hold your events, mm -hmm. what has been like the, I guess, the outreach or at least the response from people who attend those events? Uh, what have you seen firsthand in regards to seeing uh, people from different backgrounds mm -hmm. gather and actually talk about and embrace cannabis and cannabis culture? Um, you know, we've had, I think, a lot of enthusiastic feedback um, you know like I said before we've been fortunate enough to actually be instrumental I think in developing opportunities for people or helping develop opportunities for you know various people who wanted jobs in the industry um, and you know and like I said I, I think it, we've changed over time and we are changing over time as the industry grows and matures um, you know we get more and more supporters 
Um, but one of the things I think that was important to us initially was, as you said earlier, to sort of challenge the notion of what cannabis culture actually looks like and who these people actually are. Um, you know, whether it's showing, you know, patients who've been helped by the medicine or whether it's showing just a, you know, a, a very professional put together person, this is not what, you know, this is not what Jeff Sessions thinks cannabis is. And finally, in regards to our viewers and subscribers learning more about your organization, finding out more about events that you hold, Absolutely. where can they find out more about you guys on social media yes. so they can attend yes. and communicate with you guys? Yes, absolutely. So we are, we have a website. Um, we are also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, across all social media platforms. Um, I think our website is ilwomenincannabis.org. Um, and, you know, we host events at least two or three times a year. Uh, the next one probably won't be until after the first of the year, just given, uh, you know, given the fact that the election is coming up. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I would encourage everybody to get involved. We've grown as the industry has grown. We had three, over 300 people at our event the other night. A lot of opportunities. Uh, you know, great, you, you get to hear great stories from patients in terms of how medicine has helped them and also, you know, meet a lot of great people in the industry. And I can say firsthand I did attend one of your events oh, yeah. this summer, so it was actually that was a really fun one too. Yeah. Yes, it was. That was a I, good I, event. I, and look, hey, I'm being biased on it, but I'll say it was a fun time. It was yeah. a wonderful time. It was a good I event. A lot of good people. Yes. Saw some friendly faces too. Yes. Familiar faces. And other than that, thank you so much. Thank for you so much for having me. Media. I appreciate it. Uh, peace to all of you, and let's all do we can to build a better future. Hard Lens Media.